The average Indian lived how many years? Anybody remember according to? 18. 18 years. Um, now, before, in the years, in the generations before Columbus, what is believed, it was difficult to tell, what is believed to have been happening to the Indian population in the generations in, to the population in what is today North America? And what is today the United States and Canada? And what is the United States and Canada? Was, what was going on with the Indian population during this time before Columbus? It was declining. declining. The American Indians made an impact on the environment by burning away millions of acres of trees, which if they hadn't done, they might have been swallowed up by forest fires. Um, Keep in mind, the American Indians had the deer, the buffalo, rabbits, the elk, the turkey, among animals. They also had the dog. They did not have the cow, the ox, the donkey. They had the llama. They didn't have the bear. Well, they did have the bear. Probably the Indians had the bear. But they didn't have pigs or sheep. No cattle, no horses, no pigs, no sheep. No oxen. Um, what group of Indians, I'm talking about a broad group, don't say chair, what the broad group of Indians who lived east of the Mississippi are lumped into one big group called the Woodland Indians. The Woodland. Now again, that includes the Cherokee, the Iroquois, uh, but to, because again, this area of the eastern Mississippi has a whole lot of trees. Get west of Mississippi and the trees become fewer and fewer. Get to the Great Plains and trees can be scarce. Get to Arizona and New Mexico and trees can become very scarce. But the Indians in east of the Mississippi, there are a whole lot of trees, still are. Um, Who is the Spanish queen who gave Christopher Columbus his three small ships? Queen Isabella. Isabella. Who is the first European to sail around the world? Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan. All right, who is the first European to see what is the state of Georgia? Um, it's believed to have been Hernando de Soto. Ponce de Leon explored Florida, and I don't think he ever got to Georgia, but de Soto def definitely got to Georgia. Um, which colony started out as a Catholic colony? Anybody remember? A certain Catholic noblemen in England wanted to start a colony that would be a haven for Catholics because Catholics were being persecuted in England. His name was Baltimore. Lord Baltimore. Um, all right, I'm not going to ask for very many days. There is one day I want you to remember, folk. The first permanent English, now keep in mind, permanent and English settlement occurred in the year... 1607. Thank you. 1607. And uh, in 2007, the Queen came over to help us celebrate the 400th year. 1607. Um, there was an Englishman who had a dream that said, Someday North America will be filled with English speaking people. This was his goal. He didn't live to see it. Of course, it took a long time. But what was this man's name? Sir Walter Raleigh. Raleigh. To get favor with the queen, the queen was walking in London one day and she came to a mud puddle. The mud puddle was too wide for her to get around and it, 
She had to cross it, and she couldn't cross without destroying her royal slippers. Sir Walter Raleigh came up, threw down his cloak, and said, Your Majesty, walk on this. And the queen walked on his cloak. She invited him to her palace, and he became a favorite of hers at court. But again, folk, like so many people who ingratiate themselves, he didn't fall out of favor with Elizabeth, but Sir Walter Raleigh had his head chopped off by the next king, James I. He fell out of favor. Um, who was the Indian girl who supposedly fell on top of John Smith to keep him from Pocahontas? Pocahontas. She was probably enacting a religious ceremony that would have adopted Smith and his crew into the family of Indians. That's what we I mean. We don't have any doubts now that such an event occurred, but John Smith did not understand what's going on. But we now, from what we know about the Indians, think that she was participating in a ceremony. Um, Oh yes, something I did not mention that I should have. The halfway covenant. Basically what you had was in New England a bunch of men, the young people, men and women both, were not as enthused about the religious parents were. And finally the church said, well I'll tell you what, you can become half members. You won't become all the way members, you become half, and as a half member you had the right to take communion. But you still could not vote and hold up. said, if you want to join the church and you have not had a conversion, uh, you have, you know, the Puritans believed you had to have a conversion experience. Without that experience, you were not converted. And it basically had to be an emotional experience. You had to, like, weep and cry and pound on the altar and beg to give sins, whatever was involved. And they said, if you didn't have this conversion experience, we were not converted. Um, so persons who had not had this conversion experience but still wanted to join the church, they said, we'll make you halfway members. It's called a halfway covenant. All right, um, oh yes, something I did not mention about the Quakers. So I'm seeing a lot of stuff I should, but I'm taking in now. The Quakers believed that you were guided by you know, your inner light. You know, your conscience would tell you whether something was right or wrong. Um, they would not take oaths, would not fight in wars, but they also believed that men and women were equal. So if you had attended a Quaker ceremony, you would sit down, and when one of you felt an urge to get up and sing, that person could get up and sing a song. When he was through the song, he would sit down, and a man could get up as well, the women could preach as well as a man. They had no distinction, and they would go out in the street corners and preach on the street corners, men and women alike. The women would preach on the street corners, and so would the men. Uh, they did not have church buildings as such. They would uh, meet in homes, and um, they'd move as a spirit. You might say the spirit gave them move, the, the urge to move. They would move and either sing or s preach a little sermonette or offer a prayer. Very, very informal. No structure, no ordained clergy, no separation between clergy and laity. Very informal structure. Um, Most of the colonies were very, very um, rural farming. In other words, the, your, your American people would remain mostly farmers up until by 1860, the Civil War era, half your people were farmers. But up until that, well, even before that, the farming population became less and less and less until today, less than one in 20 Americans is a farmer. And everybody is wondering, when these present farmers get old and retire, their sons and daughters aren't taking over, who is going to do the farm work? And folk, we have no answer to that. Your typical American farmer is a millionaire, and his land is worth more than a million, his machinery is worth more than a million, and he's super, super deep in debt. And he can barely get by. And again, that's not a good way of existence. Deism, one thing, and then I'll close. Deism taught that God had made the universe, but he left it to run itself, and they compared it to a mechanical clock. Um, 
In other words, if you know anything about a mechanical clock, you set it and run it, and it'll tick and talk by itself. But every once in a while, those pine cones will drop to the floor, and you've got to pull them up every day. That was the type of clocks they had then. Do any of you know what I'm talking about? The cuckoo clock that has the pine cones. The idea. problem with setting, you can never get them to the right time. I mean, right, the pendulum. If the clock is too fast, you pull the pendulum out, and that's supposed to slow the clock down. If the clock is too slow, you pull the pendulum in, and that's supposed to speed it up. But I've seen these cuckoo clocks where I, they're too fast. So I pull the pendulum down, and that just makes them faster. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why. You said deism? Huh? Deism, what was the name of that? Deism. Yeah, God was, that's where deism comes. God had made the universe, but then he didn't interfere. He left the universe to run itself. All right, folk, with that, everybody have a good week. And let me suggest something to you. If you didn't know it, I'm going to admit to you. Without